to all my subscribers and to all of you who are watching for the first time and not yet subscribed, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and all the success for the coming year 2023. And today and this very first game of our brand new season in the Championship, the first time Elgin have ever been this high in the Scottish tiers we will be doing something different and we'll be taking a look at how we would normally prepare for a very difficult game like this and what we will look at in order to try and maximize our chances of getting a result today let's go and kick some balls hello and welcome to the road to glory part 28 season 4 here at elgin city in scotland and if you are new to the channel why not subscribe, like, watch and comment, help the channel to grow and help us to support all that good stuff that you can see scrolling above. And today we will be starting our campaign in the championship, the highest that Elgin City have ever featured in the tiers of Scotland. And it is a very exciting time for us, but we do have to start with one of the most difficult games away at Queen of the South. Queen of the South, who are a very good team, predicted to finish in fifth, and we are predicted by the media to finish in ninth. So there is a gulf of talent between the two teams. And so today, something different, because there is a lack of news, we are going to look at how we are going to set up and prepare in order to try and maximize our chances in this very difficult game. And some of the things that we're going to look at in order to try and get a point, or maybe even three. But before we do that, there was the matter of that very difficult League Cup Group D that we had to go through in pre-season. So let's go and find out how we got on in that competition. And despite my fears going into the competition, and when you were with us last, you saw us have that 1-0 defeat away at Aberdeen, we didn't do too badly at all. We then followed the Aberdeen game with a home game against Alloa Athletic, which we won by three goals to nil. And then Premiership Dundee, again we had to play the Premiership clubs away, and we lost that game, very close game, by two goals to one. So maybe the squad we're putting together is not that inferior after all. And then we followed that with a very convincing 4-1 victory against Montrose. And that meant that we finished in third place with six points from our four games. And I think that that was a very creditable performance and certainly made sure that we were competitive in that competition. And today we will be playing away at Queen of the South, who are a very, very good team. And we're gonna to have to play very, very well and set up extremely well in order to get something out of this game. But before we do that, let's go and have a look at some of the things that have happened in the transfer window since you were last with us. And there has been a little bit of activity in the transfer window. And so, since you were last here, we have made two signings. We were looking at two Italians, one a defender and one a striker. And we have signed Mattia Malaspina, who was the central defender. He looks like he's going to be a very, very good player. He's just 20 years old. He's got five star potential. He's already four and a half star. And I think he's going to do a very good job for us this year. And my idea really is to play him as a DM for most of the season. He's a very good defensive midfielder, or we could even play him as a ball winning midfielder when necessary in midfield. I think playing him at centre back will be limited, but he is a very, very good player in all three of those positions. So I think he's been a very, very good signing. We were unable to sign the Italian striker, but we did then sign Romain Mundel on a free transfer. And he is a very good midfielder. He's got also five-star potential. He's currently four-star. He will play as a central midfielder in attack. And he looks like he's a very, very good player and will do a very good job for us as well just 22 years old, another signing I think that is going to prove to be a good signing. And the only thing that's happened in terms of players going out is that Ross Mackay and Matthew Henderson have gone out on loan. And so nothing spectacular has happened in terms of the transfers out. 
And so that will brings us very nicely to Queen of the South versus Elgin and the things that we are going to do in order to set that up. Well, normally there will be five things that I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at the scout report, obviously, for Queen of the South. I'm going to look at the data hub and the premier stats for the season and to see how well the opposition are doing in both of those. We're going to look at our team and their team and we're going to look at then how they have been playing and if there is anything we can do to stop them playing in that way and to make them play in the way that we want them to play. I always think of FM as a game of probability. Now you've got two teams, one of whom has better players than the other, and in this case Queen of the South has much better players than Elgin City. And so you therefore think the team with the better players are the team that are more likely to win. But what is the probability in life of that happening? Well, in life things happen that happen against the what is expected, and the unexpected will happen from time to time. So it's a game of probability. What is the probability of Elgin City beating Queen of the South. We're looking at the standing of both teams, uh, Queen of the South being a cert mid-table team and Elgin City expected to be in a relegation battle. I'd say it's probably around about a 20% chance that Elgin City would get something out of this game. And so when everything is set up, the game will roll its dice. A loaded dice four times more likely to come down on the side of Queen of the South than Elgin City. But it is possible to change that probability. Now there's nothing we can do about the players because the players at this point in time are set. We still have room in the transfer window and we could bring in better players, but that's not going to affect this game. This game is based on the probability given the players now of both teams. So how can we alter the probability? But there is a way that we can change that probability and swing that 20% chance to maybe a 30% chance, a 40% chance, or even a 50-50 at this time. And that would be a 50-50 would be where we wanna go because then when the game rolls its dice, it's an equal dice and it will come down one way or the other. And to do that, we're going to look at our tactics and how we set up ourselves and we are going to base that on how the opposition play and if we can work out and read how the opposition play and stop them playing the way they want to and make them play the way we want to then we are going to increase our probability of getting a result and therefore when the dice is rolled just before the game we are in with a better shout of getting the dice fall on our side but let's have a look at how we're going to do that and at this point, the data hub is going to be of no value because it only kicks in after three league games. And here at Elgin, it's of even less value because we only have one data analyst who cannot produce very good reports and they're not really worth a cent. And the board will not allow us to increase that number. So the amount of information we get on the data hub is negligible. And so it's of really little value to us. And in terms of the um, championship stats, there are going to be no stats um, at the moment because simply not enough games have been played and there's nothing that we can use that's going to be of any value. But there are things that we can look at and we can begin by looking at the reports of both of the teams. Now Queen of the South, if we bring up their scout report, then we can see straight away that their teamwork is very, very good and their work rate is very, very good. So that means that they are going to work very well together and that is an area they are going to be very strong in and they are going to work very hard for each other and they're going to be difficult to break down. They have a number of good players. They're also very good at marking and their vision's not bad. Anticipation is not bad. Some of the things that are not good is they don't have much flair. Goalkeepers don't have very good aerial reach and they lack pace, which is great for us. And they're not very composed either. So those are two things that we might want to exploit. And in terms of our team report, if we go to our squad planner and we go to the assistant report, then you can see we're not very strong in anything. I think we have a fairly decent defense and we're not very good at crossing. We know that, that's why we do low crossings. 
and anticipation's poor, technique is poor, we're not very good at corners. And one of the worrying things is that work rate is poor as well as teamwork. Teamwork is very, very poor. And so we have got a problem playing against a team which will be very hard working and will work hard for each other. And we do have a number of problems. Our passing's not the greatest in the world. We're not very pacey. And so we, we kind of like up against it in this game to begin with. But there are things that we can do. We can use that information to try and get a better result. And the second thing that we can do is we can go to their schedule and we can have a look at their recent games. Now they're in good form and so their morale is going to be good as well as ours. So in terms of morale, it's not going to make much difference. But if we look at their latest game, and I did watch most of this game, one of the things that I noticed was that at set pieces they only leave one back. And so that might be something that we can exploit if we can get a quick counter attack from a corner and leave two up, we might get a numbers advantage and score on the breakaway. And so if we look at the analytical data, you can see straight away that most of their attacking comes down the right hand side. And you can see that's favored over here in the heat map. But if we look further into that and look at the pass combinations, then you can see that what happens is that most of the passing that they do is in this area of the field. You can see their wing backs are very high up the pitch, so that's obviously an issue we need to deal with, but it's this area of the pitch and this area of the pitch that we need to particularly look at. If we can close these things down, then that will be very, very good for us. And we might prevent them from making all these strikes down the right hand side. And we're gonna tight mark him, close him down, Turn him onto his weaker foot. We're going to try and take this guy, McKenna, out of the game. We're also going to focus on Sean One. We're going to close him down and force him onto his left foot. And this guy, Four Dice, who's given the ball away for them more than anyone else, we're also going to force him onto his very weak left foot. We're going to try and get them to move the ball this way rather than this way. These two central midfield pivots, we're going to close them down as well. We're going to tight mark them try and take them out of the game and what we're going to do is we're going to have a high line and we're going to try and get in their face their composure isn't very good and if we press them hard they might make errors especially this guy and present chances with us we also know that there are spaces here and here and if we can counter attack effectively then we will be able to get space behind these wing backs who are extremely high up the pitch. So all is not lost and I think that with the right setup we could get something out of this game. And so now if we go to our own tactic, we have changed our tactic, we've moved away from this three at the back and we've become a little bit more positive. I think we're a better team than I'm giving them credit for. We've moved away from the three at the back because of wing back issues and if with a couple of injuries we would be screwed. <laughs> and so I've gone back to a, a full back system where I have much more cover and better players now at full back and I can play players like Wilson and McKenzie at full back. Otherwise we will be very weak at full back and that's not an area that I wish to be weak at. So I've gone with this 4-3-1-2. It's a positive attacking mentality. I do have a more defensive style where we can bring a player back um, if we're holding on to a lead. And if we're chasing a lead, I've got a lot more players on attack that we can switch to to, um, to chase the lead. Uh, but we're going to start with this with this 4-3-1-2. It's a very positive way of playing. We have two attacking forwards. We have an attacking midfielder and we have an attacking central midfielder. So I think it is a very attacking style of play. Um, and although they're not familiar with it yet, I think they will grow into this nicely as the season progresses. Whether we can get a good start or not, I don't know. 
The reason why I've got Dingwell um, playing up front with Dawson is because Pasnik is a very selfish player and also Dawson is a selfish player, but Dingwell isn't. And so I was unsure about playing two selfish players up front. And so Dingwell has a little bit of a relationship with Dawson and I thought that might be a better option today against a team that are very, very hard working and work well together. Very good team as such. And so in terms of the opposition instructions to help us achieve our goals, what we're going to do is we're going to close down Sean Want. He's a very influential player in that triangle. And we're going to force him onto his left foot to force him to go across the pitch this way. And we'll do the same for four dice. We're going to put him onto his left foot. He's, weak, he's very weak on his left foot and try to force him across the pitch as well. They don't want to play in this area. They want to play over here. So we're going to try and force them across to play over on this left hand side of the pitch. We're going to also tight mark both of these center mids, defensive center mids, and try to take them out of the game. We're going to show um, Harrison Clark onto his left foot again to help him to go this way rather than this way and in terms of the attacking mid kilty we are going to tight mark him he's not very strong and he's not very brave so we're going to hard tackle him and we're going to force him onto his weaker foot and we're not really going to do much with strikers we're just going to show Rudan onto his very weaker foot his left foot is very very weak so in terms of what we are going to do it's about forcing them across the pitch and it, getting them to play on the left hand side and they don't like playing there they want to play here we are also going to be playing very positive we're going to be pushing high up and that's to put their back line under pressure we are taking a risk with the back line here but they're not very pacey but if we do look under threat we can always drop that line back a little bit but we're going to start with a high press and we're going to go after them and try to cause them to make mistakes in this area of the pitch and that's it that's the way we've set up and so i think now is a good time to go and play this game and let's go and see if the tactic works. Let's go and kick some balls. And so the team for today is Hiddleston in goal with Wilson, Mackenzie, Mackay and Crane at the back. Hamilton, Malaspina, Whittaker and Mundell at the top of midfield. And then Dingwall and Dawson will play up front. And if I've done my homework correctly, maybe we can get a result here today. And that would be the perfect start to the season because Queen of the South are a very, very good team. And they're asking me not to um, press ever four dice, but I don't think that's a good idea. We need to put pressure on him just like we are going to put pressure on the rest of the team. We need to get up in their faces. My assistant manager is telling me to play in a cautious way, but I want to get in their face try to make them make mistakes at the back and that is the game plan that's what we're sticking to it is queen of the south who've had the first highlight but here's mackenzie mackenzie plays a free kick to Mackay, who finds crane crane is looking for Mackay again and here is crane i don't want to be playing down this left hand side particularly because that's where they are strong and here's whittaker whittaker looking over the top for dawson dawson's in and one-on-one -on -one. can he score and the goalkeeper has saved it and what a chance that was for dawson i don't expect him to miss those one-on-ones but that was a great chance and he's blown it and i wonder is this not going to be our day here is a corner though we are having the first few highlights and it comes back out to mackenzie mackenzie finds malaspina but the highlight dramatically comes to an end and um well we've made a fairly decent start we've pretty much kept queen of the south at bay i just want to have a look at the heat map and we are stopping them from playing in that triangle and a lot of their play is going down the left which is good and that's exactly what the game plan was designed to do 
I'm a little bit worried about their full back on the right on our right hand side, but we'll keep an eye on that because he's also not a bad player and if it's going through him, then we also have to make sure that he's not a problem in that area of the pitch. But here's Hamilton. Hamilton finds Wilson. Wilson looking inside. He's found Dawson again. Dawson's through one on one and this time Dawson's buried it. It's Queen of the South nil. Elgin City won. We are deservedly in front, I think, because we've totally shut them down. We have stopped them playing the way they want to play. We've had the better chances from what I can see. Dawson threw one-on-one. -on -one. This time, he buried it in the corner. It's 1-0 to Elgin, and we are off to a great start. Is this going to work? Have we read the game properly? It's always going to be touch and go, and they may even change things as they go into the second half. Still a little bit worried about this fullback on this um, left-hand side, but we'll, we'll check on that later. But at the moment, we are stopping these boys playing, and that's exactly what we need to do. But they do have a corner. It's swung into the box. The goalkeeper's come for it and has held on to it. Good job, Hiddleston. And as we come into the final 10 minutes of the first half, we are a goal ahead. And Huddleston, he's looking for Mackenzie. Mackenzie, I don't really want to play about too much at the back here. Here's Wilson. Just get it up the pitch. That's better. Let's get it up to Dawson. See what Dawson can do. Dawson's looking for a cross. He finds Dingwall. Dingwall's hit the post. It could have so easily been 2-0, but it remains 1-0. I think we deservedly are in front. I think we've stopped them playing the way they want to play. We've done a very, very good job of it. And you can see that most of our attacks are coming down the right. At half time, I'm very pleased with how things are going. Our XG is a lot better than theirs. And I'm gonna say we've created a lot of stuff. Keep this going. But I just do want to check in on the opposition team and they haven't made any changes to their shape so we'll continue doing what we're doing and hopefully we'll see the result out i'm going to just keep checking that they don't change their shape because that will be a warning sign and we do have a free kick and it's hamilton over the ball he chips it into the box and mckenzie has headed it just over the bar we are totally in control of this game but it is a game that we do need to be careful about. We're still stopping them play around this area by and large, although they are having more possession around there at the moment. And we do perhaps need to make some changes. Maybe I need to go to a little bit more of a cautious mentality, but they have a chance. It's hit the post. We have managed to get it clear. And here is Dawson, Dawson on the counter-attack. Dawson bringing it forward, but he's tackled and the ball goes out for a throw. And I do need to look, are there any tired players? Let's go and have a look and make some changes, maybe. And so we have made a couple of changes and we have brought Critchley on as the attacking midfield and we've brought Paznik on up front and we've made him a DLF. And hopefully, really it is now a case of just holding on to this 1-0 victory and it may be time to actually go a little bit more cautious, a little bit more defensive. And Crane has done well there and won the ball back. And he finds Hiddleston. Hiddleston long up the pitch. And it's going to be collected by Want. Want drives it long back himself. And it's poor in defence. So they have a chance and they've hit it over the crossbar. They are coming more into this game. So I am going to go now to a more cautious uh, way of playing. And I think it's just a case now of maybe I will make some more changes and switch to that more defensive style of play. And so really now we've gone a bit more defensive. We've gone on to a defensive tactic. We're going to try and hold on to the game now. We've, even if we concede, it will still be a very, very good result. To get a 1-1 draw away at Queen of the South on opening day will be a very good result. But they are pressing forward and here they are, they are through and it's a great save by Hiddleston. We need to do better than that. I just want to check on where our lines are set now. Um, we are on a, we need to come back I think onto a standard line. Uh, not a lower line, a standard line. And then hopefully we'll be able to hold on to this. I think my um, 
assistant manager is trying to tell me something. I'm not quite sure what it is yet. We'll have a look in a minute. And there's a long punt upfield, and Joey Dawson's chasing it. Joey Dawson's having a good opening game to the season. He needs to put pressure on him. He can't, and it's cleared up the field. But we've won the second ball. Here's Alston. Alston, who's just come on for... Humble and it's going to fall to Alston again. Alston, our very experienced midfielder, because could bring him on as an impact sub for for free kicks and stuff. He's a very very good set piece taker. We're holding on to this somehow. We're doing very very well. And here's Alston again. Alston's looking for Critchley. Alston interchanging. Pasnick. Pasnick to Dawson. Dawson through. Dawson scores. Two nil to Elgin. What a result. What a manager. The way we've read this game has been absolutely spot on. We are going to win this game quite comfortably now. And I am a very happy manager. Our first game ever in the championship. We seem to have totally read it. Well, that was a brilliant burst of pace from Dawson. He left the two centre-backs for dead. And it is now 2-0. And what was the assistant manager telling me? I think we'll take a look at that. Uh, Wilson and maybe Scott McGill should replace him. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we will... Um, and we'll tell him to do whatever he wants to do. I think we're pretty safe now. And we're going to win our opening game of the season. We are 2-0 up. We do have a free kick. And he's looking for Dawson again. McGill finds Dawson. Dawson in space. Can he get a cross in? No, he can't. He's forced to turn. He finds Hamilton. Hamilton's looking for a cross. He finds Olsen. And Olsen fires it in. We have won it by three goals to nil. What a result this is. And I think it's clear to see. If you actually read the game, if you know how they want to play force them to play in a different way this is how you win games in FM and what a great start this is and when you do have a lot of time this is how you should read the game um, unfortunately playing YouTube safe you don't really have a lot of time between games and so it's not always possible to do this in this depth but today's been a good experiment and it looks like we are going to win this fairly comfortably we're defending very very well we've attacked very well and most importantly we've stopped them playing the way that they want to now you can see they are playing the way they want to but it is a little bit late in the day when they play the way they want to, they will score. And however, it's too late for them. It's too little, too late. We are going to win this game. You can clearly see how they're using this triangle to force opposition to... And they are getting overloads in this area. And because we have gone more defensive, we allowed them to play in this area and they've taken advantage of it. But there's only a couple of minutes left. Even if they do it again, I don't mind. I'm still going to defend for all our lives and try and hold on to this. Here's Dawson. Dawson will find Mackenzie and McGill. McGill finds uh, it's malice peanut who's playing back there and here's alston again alston who's had a good game since he's come on and critchley critchley finds himself in space and that's another area we were looking behind the wing backs there's space and alston with a drive <laughs> that's tipped over the bar and now i think it's time to just tell them to slow everything down and we're going to find ways to actually we're going to slow the pace down in transition we're going to do everything we can to slow it down. We're going to waste time absolutely frequently. <laughs> and we do have a corner, though. And um, hopefully this could be the last highlight of the game. It's Alston to take the corner. It's Queen of the South 1, Elgin City 3. You can see, Alston, you take your time, my son. There's no rush for this. Absolutely no rush. Time is ticking away. And Alston with the corners, looking for the near post, and that's headed away. And hopefully now time will rush on. There's going to be one more highlight, maybe, as Hiddleston is over the ball. 
and he's just going to hoof it long now. And there it goes. It's a long punt up the field, and it's come through to Critchley. Critchley unmarked. Can he find someone in support? He's going to look. He's looking for Pasnick. Pasnick to Dawson, and Dawson's put it past the post. He was offside anyway, but that has to be the last highlight of the game. Surely, referee, you're going to blow your whistle now. Let's get to the end of the game, referee, as as they are Queen of the South are looking for one last chance, but it is full time and we have won the game and we've won it in style and I'm very proud of them. They stuck to the game plan. The game plan was spot on and we have beaten Queen of the South in our first match away and we are sitting in second place in the table and we couldn't wish for a better start to the championship than that. Queen of the South beaten by three goals to one. We do have to play a number of games before the transfer window will close. And I think what we'll do is wait for that to happen. And then we'll come back when we are playing Kilmarnock at home after the window slams shut. And hopefully we'll have some more information for you about how that has gone. And that's it for this video. If you are new to the channel, why not subscribe, like, watch and comment. Help the channel to grow. Help us to support all that very good stuff that you can see scrolling up above. And what a start. We've done well in the League Cup Group D. We've done even better in our first match in the Championship. And all that remains to be said now is stay safe. And we will see you in the next episode.